You know what you do, chat? You just go in, you hit him with a quick W, pull him in, golem form, and then you just start swinging on him. Some people think the Great Axe is a brain dead weapon, an unskillful amateur hour face roll option of weaponry. You want to know what I think? I see a Great Axe. A full size 4x4 Jeep Wrangler transform a Giga Chad Alpha Male. We're not just spending to win, we're out here mowing the grass of the battlefield, chopping down every peasant in sight, and weed whacking like we're getting paid for it. So the next time you pick up a Great Axe, just know you're not just choosing a weapon, you're choosing a goddamn lifestyle. Welcome to the Great Axe Club. Welcome, Descriptive Gaming. Sup guys, Border here and welcome back to a brand new video. The Wild Blood update continues and we are going to dive into shapeshifter weapons, starting with the Earth Ruin Staff, allowing us to transform into this runestone golem. But before we get into it, I want to invite you to join in on this week's giveaway. I'll be giving away 7 days of premium to one lucky winner. So to join in on a chance to win this prize, all you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your in-game name in the comments below. And I'll be picking a winner in the Great Axe Club Community Discord one week from now, so stay tuned for that. But with that brief introduction out of the way, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so diving into the shape-shifting weapons, the first of seven, the Earth Ruin Staff. I have to say guys, I have tested this staff out a fair bit and I'm very excited to see what its capabilities are and what kind of builds we can use to maximize its potential. As an axe player, I think this was one of the staffs I was most excited about because as it is a tank weapon, it does have that brawly playstyle to it. So it's going to be really exciting to see what we can pull off in terms of PvE and PvP. So to get us started, we're going to be going through the spells and abilities to see which one does best in which scenario, because I know some of you might play solo, in small groups, medium scale, large scale, or maybe you're even part of a ZVZ group. So we're going to go through each ability and see which one you might want to use in which scenario. So looking at the first Q spell, we do have Unstable Projectile, which deals magical damage to the target enemy and deals damage to enemies hit behind them. And it also grants us one shift charge. So first looking at this ability, it is a casted ability, and it also has no cooldown. But two things to consider, it does require a lot of casting, and it is also pretty energy heavy. So for other shapeshifter weapons, I can see this being pretty useful, especially with certain builds. Um, but for us, it is not the quickest ability in terms of getting us all the shift charges we need to transform into our Earthstone Ruin Golem. So for that reason alone, I won't be recommending this Q ability for this staff, Moving on to the second Q ability, we do have Reality Fisher, which is my personal favorite. It is a two-part ability, making it a combo. The first part deals magical damage into the target direction, followed by the second part of the combo also dealing more magical damage, uh, and again into the target direction. And it grants us not one, but two shift charges, one per ability in the combo, which is really nice, because that's going to allow us to shapeshift into our Earth Rune Golem even faster. The cast time on these abilities is nice and short, the range is nice and long as you can see, and the radius uh, to where enemies will be hit is pretty generous. So for small scale solo PvP, uh, I definitely recommend this because it's just going to give you shift charges uh, extremely quickly, allowing you to change into golem form as soon as possible. Looking at the third Q spell, it is Adapting Matter, which deals magical damage to enemies hit and can also shield you and up to three allies. In terms of shift charges, it's going to give you one for dealing damage to enemies, and if you can shield at least one ally in your group, it's going to give you two shift charges. So in terms of group play, if you're able to deal damage and hit enemies, or sorry, and give your allies a shield, it's going to be worth it because just like the previous Q that we talked about, it's going to give you the same amount of shift charges. So if you're able to do that and you want to be that more supportive element in your group, then it's definitely going to be worth it. And moving on to the last Q spell, it is Pulse Shock, which I'm yet to unlock on live servers, so I apologize for that. But it does deal magical damage in front of you and also reduces the resi damage resistances of enemies hit. In terms of shift charges, it's going to give you up to two if you're able to hit two or more targets. So another Q spell that can grant you two shift charges. In terms of use of this ability, I feel like it's going to be stronger in terms of large scale ZVZ fights, 
because if you're able to clump up large groups of enemies, you're going to get a lot of value, especially in terms of reducing the resistances, allowing the, the DPS in your group to follow up and deal big damage. Already moving on to our first W ability, we do have Distortion, which creates a cloud on the ground dealing magical damage to enemies inside and also slows them by 20%. In terms of uh, ship charges, it can grant you up to two, assuming two enemies stand in it or more. Um, so for this ability, it's not bad. It, it deals decent amounts of magical damage and gives you a nice little slow. Um, but for the staff, just like I said for the first Q ability, um, it doesn't necessarily complement the kit of the Earthstone Rune Golem that we're going for. Um, so for other staffs, I can find it useful for sure. But for this staff in particular, I'm going to advise against it. Our next W ability is Positional Drift, which is going to allow you to pull 5 enemies towards you, root them, and deal magical damage. Not only that, but it's going to give you up to 2 shift charges if you're able to pull 2 or more enemies. So in terms of the Runestone Golem playstyle, I think this is going to be the most suitable, because it's going to give us that nice engage that we're looking for. It's going to allow us to pull the enemies towards us, go crazy in terms of damage, CC, and we can catch enemies out, allowing our groups, our allies, to follow up in terms of damage. Looking at the third W ability, we have Tether Shift. Uh, using this on an ally will grant them damage resistances, and if you recast it on them again, it's going to allow you to pull them towards you, so saving them, essentially. So if you like that more supportive element that we've been talking about to your playstyle, you can definitely use that. Um, if you do use this on an enemy, it's going to first uh, Tether to the enemy, and then using it again is going to allow you to jump towards them and engage the enemy. So not a bad uh, choice in terms of engage. Firstly, I do like the previous uh, W that we were looking at in terms of engage. I'd rather pull enemies towards me than go full throttle into the group of enemies, uh, but still an optional choice. It also only grants you one shift charge, so something just to think about. And looking at the last W ability, it is Polymorph, and again, I apologize for not having this unlocked to show you guys, um, but it does transform enemies into helpless animals for a short period of time. But if you do hit them while in this form, it will instead decrease their max and current health by 15%, and it also deals magical damage. So I can see this being very strong in terms of small group PvP. Uh, even in terms of ganking, like if you want to defend yourself or maybe gank someone and make them essentially useless while they try to run away, you can turn them into an animal and then follow up from there. Alrighty, and moving on to the meat and potatoes of this staff, the E ability, Runestone Golem Transformation. So just reading through this, we can transform into this golem for up to 20 seconds, but we can cancel it and go back into human form by our choice. Um, so reading its stats, offensive, low, <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, defensive high as, as it is a tank staff, and energy regeneration is also very high, which is nice because we won't have to worry about energy outside of the form. Um, while in this form, we're also immune to force movement effects, so we can't be rooted, we can't be pushed back, which is nice, we can just tank and be in the position we wish to. And in terms of the charges, it's also going to increase our max and current health by the percent based on the uh, shift charges we have. So looking at that, one charge is 10%, two is 15, three is 20, and uh, sorry, four is 25, and five is 30%. So up to 30% increased max and current health. So that's going to create for some high health pools. So I'm excited to play with that. And in terms of passives, I'm actually going to save these to last just because it's going to play into the rest of our Golem abilities. So we're going to come back to that after we've gone through the E abilities themselves. So looking at our first Golem ability, we do have Boulder Crash, which is a ranged ability. When landing on the target, it's going to deal physical damage, but not only that, it's going to stun them. And it has a crazy range of 18 meters, so we can stand comfortably back here, transform into Golem form, and hit them with this Boulder Crash and stun them. So overall, pretty good first ability to get us started. And looking at our second Golem ability, we do have Tectonic Shift. So two parts to the ability as it is a combo. The first one, it's going to shift the ground and create a wall. Uh, enemies on the outside of the wall are going to be pushed back. But if they are on the inside, they're going to pull in towards you. So situational thing, but I think for the most part, you're going to want to pull enemies towards you as you are the Golem. And that's going to deal physical damage. And not only that, but if you're doing PvE, it's going to make you the highest priority uh, target. So it's going to be a bit of a taunt ability. 
And moving on to the second part of the ability, once you use it again, you can slam the ground in a radius around you, and that's going to deal uh, physical damage. It's going to throw the enemies into the air. And not only that, but it's going to decrease their max and current health by 15%. So a lot going on there. So it's going to look something like this. You can change into golem form. Mouse over the area which you, use, you wish to summon the wall, and that's going to bring them towards you. And you can use it again. Nice big AoE damage, and knocks them up. And decreases their current and max health by 15%. So overall, pretty good two-piece combo. And the E itself, while in golem form, is just to end your transformation. So say you want to go back into human form and assist your allies, or maybe you're in trouble and you want to use your boots and run away, you can simply just press E, end your form, and run away, use whatever human-based abilities you wish to do. And our passive ability while in Golem form is Powerful Impact. We need at least one remaining shift charge for this to become active, but it's going to grant our auto attacks physical damage and a 4 meter radius, so it's going to deal AoE damage around the mob that we're auto attacking basically. So we're going to get our shift charge here, go into Golem form, and then start attacking. And then you can see the surrounding mobs start to take physical damage as a result. So going back to the regular passives, the first one we have is Altered Beast. Uh, when we transform, this is going to give us more max and current health by 2% for 5 seconds, uh, which stacks up 5 times. So we have our max uh, shift charges here. We transform into our Golem form, and as you can see, we have a fair bit amount of more health. Moving on to our second passive, we do have Intimidating Presence. Uh, anytime we hit an enemy with our Q ability, it's going to decrease the damage they deal by 3% for 7 seconds, and that can stack up to 3 times. It's also going to increase our threat regeneration against mobs by 100%, so this is more of a PvE ability, especially if you're going to be tanking. And our third passive ability is Innate Power. After we deal damage, this is going to give us 1 shift charge every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. Uh, not a horrible ability, um, but with the amount of abilities we have that are going to grant us uh, shift charges, I don't think this is really necessary. Maybe you can play around it with it and find it more useful, uh, but personally I don't think I'll be picking this one. I'll be choosing other passives instead. And our last passive ability is Rule Bender. So after casting our W ability, this is going to increase our auto attack speed and cast speed by 30% for 5 seconds. So a fun little passive to play around with. So we can use our W like so, and then we can cast our Qs much quicker, making it almost a uh, insta-cast actually. Another fun way we can take advantage of this passive ability is using the auto attack speed for golem form. So to activate it like we did before, we can go ahead and use our W ability, followed by entering golem form, and start swinging away. So now that we took a look at all the abilities and how to use them, let's take a look at how the build looks in action. So for my build of choice, we have our Q, Reality Fisher, followed by our W, Positional Drift, and then we have our E, and then for the rest of the spells in terms of our build, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But going into a fight, you can simply run in, start to channel your, sorry, cast your Qs, followed by auto attacks in between, do a little filler damage, and then once we have our 5 stacks, we can maybe pull them in with our W. And leading into our E, we can stun them, pull them towards us, slam them down for more damage with our W, and rinse and repeat. And just like that, we're able to go back into Golem form pretty, pretty soon if we stay in Golem form for the full uh, 20 seconds. The cooldown remaining is very, fairly short, which is nice because it means we can get back into Golem form super quick. Alrighty guys, now that we have the spells and abilities out of the way, we know what they do and how to use them. Now let's take a look at some of the build ideas for the Earthrune staff. Instead of just doing one specific build, we have a small collection of gear here. So I'll do my best to break down each individual piece and show you guys when it would be useful in what scenario. So diving right into it, let's take a look at our helmets of choice. So for our first one, it's going to be the Mage Cowl for the Fire Breath ability. This is going to be a nice entry level uh, ability for beginner players looking to try the staff out, especially for PvE, solo content, maybe a couple friends. This is going to help you clear out mobs a little bit faster outside of Golem form. So a nice little beginner friendly ability here. Moving on to our next option, we do have the Cleric Cowl for the Ice Block ability. This is more of a PvP focus pick. 
Uh, say you are at a golem form, you are a little bit more vulnerable as you are not in your tanky form yet. If you do manage to get caught out in PvP, this is a nice little ability to keep you safe until your golem form cooldown is off and then you can continue into that form safely. Moving on to our third pick here, we do have the Knight's Helmet for the Displacement Immunity ability. This is more PvP focused and more of at a large scale to ZBZ level fight. Or you can even try this out in Faction Warfare if you wanted to. But this is going to grant you and your allies that nice immunity to force movement effects, allowing you to land a big engage onto a large group of enemies, or perhaps shut down and engage from the enemy themselves. And for our last pick here, we do have the Spectre Hood for the Flash of Insight ability. This is more of an advanced pick, but it could work in PvP and PvE. Say you want to get creative and use your chest ability before going into Golem form. Like so, we can use our Hellion Jacket, followed by going into Golem form. And say your Golem form ends and you want to use your chest ability again after exiting the form. You can simply do so, just cancel your form, Flash of Insight, and you'll have your chest ability again ready to go. Now moving on to our chest abilities, I do want to get a couple out of the way that do not work once you enter golem form. Sadly, I tested these and they were a no-go. Uh, Spectre Jacket here for self-ignition, which is some of the best uh, AoE in the game, from a chest piece at least. Um, you can use this, but as soon as you enter golem form, it does get cancelled sadly, so this one does not work. And the second chest that I'd like to point out that doesn't work, sadly, is Guardian Armor in terms of Enfeeble Aura. You can activate this aura, but again, as soon as you go into form, it is sadly cancelled. So another one you may not want to use for that reason. But we do have some chest pieces that do continue their effects while in Golem form, which is very exciting because it allows for quite potential in terms of creativity and different types of builds, such as the Stalker Jacket for Electric Field. We can use this before going into form and go into form and it remains active for the full duration, so very exciting. Another fun option you guys can try, which will be good for PvP and PvE, is the Hellion Jacket. As I showed before, you can simply activate the jacket and go into form and it's going to remain active for the whole time. And for our last choice of chest piece, this is a creative one, but I really want to make this work because it could prove to be a lot of fun. It is the Soldier Armor for the Fury ability. So, like the other ones that I just mentioned, you can use this and it'll stay active during your Golem form. So say you're in form, you're taking a bunch of damage, this is going to increase your damage done and crowd control effects each time you take a hit as a frontline. So, it could be devastating, we'll find out soon. Moving on to our boots, we do have two options I want to highlight, starting with these, the Hunter Shoes, and that's going to be for the Rush ability. Not only is it going to increase our movement speed by a lot, but it's also going to grant us increased duration on our crowd control effects, and we can use this just before going into Golem form and the effects will remain active. And what is the ability on our Q in Golem form? It's a stun, so it's going to give us a longer stun. So it's a short demo, should be a mob right here. We can simply go up. Activate our boots, go into form, and throw a longer stun, and they're going to be stunned for a longer time. And the second option I wanted to highlight is Soldier Boots, and that's specifically going to be for the Wanderlust ability. This is going to be more PvP focused, but say you're roaming around in the open world with a small group, and you want to engage an enemy or potentially run away. Well, this can create for some fun and creativity. So you can basically use this ability outside of form. And then once your stacks climb with Wanderlust, you can enter form, and this is going to allow you to run a lot faster than you should while in Golem form. And moving on to capes, there's some fun combinations we could try out in terms of pushing DPS with this staff, but when it comes to being a straight tank, you're going to want to use the Martlock cape, and that is for shield protection. When we drop below 25% health, this is going to reduce all the damage we take by 50%, so pretty self-explanatory, this is going to activate even when we're in Golem form, so just overall a great defensive option. And when it comes to food, I'm going to highlight two simple options, starting with the cabbage soup. If you're getting into PvE and you're playing solo or maybe with a couple friends and you're in dungeons specifically or open world mobs and you want to get your health back up to full quicker so you can pull more mobs, this is going to be a good option for you. It's going to increase your health regeneration by a lot, allowing you to pull the next mobs quicker. And the second option that I'm going to recommend, and the one I'll probably be using, is beef sandwiches. And this is going to increase our overall max health. I think this would play on nicely with the theme of increased max and current health from the Golem form itself. So as you can see here, we have 4400 health, and with the food, we would have even more. So I think I'm going to go for that. 
And last but not least, we have our potions here. And it's a little bit tricky because we can't actually use potions while we're in form, so we have to use them before or after exiting golem form. But three options here, we have our healing potions, which is going to heal us for a percent of our health. And we can use that. And then enter our form, and that's going to heal us for a percent of our health. Option number two that I'd like to highlight is resistance potions. And again, we probably have to pop this before going into form, because say you're about to go into a big fight, lots of enemies, and you know you're about to take damage, might not be a bad idea to pop a potion. So for example, you could run up to engage the enemy, pop the potion, and then enter form. And the effects are going to last until the end of the duration. And the last option I want to give you guys for potions is the Gigantify potions. And this is going to play on that max health theme that we've already been talking about for a percent of your health. And it's also going to make you immune to force movement effects before you go into form, which is kind of nice. So you could always do that. You could pop the potion, roll up, and pop Golem form. And we're even bigger, which is always fun. But that is about it, guys. I know this was a long video, so thank you so much for sticking around. And I hope you learned something about the Earthrune staff. But this doesn't have to be the end of the Earthrune staff. If you enjoyed this video, but want to see more gameplay in terms of PvP or PvE, let me know in the comments below. Also, I would love it if you gave the video a like and considered subscribing to the channel for more videos like these. But that about does it for me. So until next time, stay safe, stay positive, and I'll see you in the Discord.